This video presents the probabilistic normal epipolar constraint, a novel constraint on the relative pose between two images. The probabilistic normal epipolar constraint, or short PNEC, accounts for uncertainty in the position of feature points in the images. For the first time, it allows for uncertainty information to be incorporated into the normal epipolar constraint to achieve more accurate pose estimation. Relative pose estimation is often the foundation of geometric vision algorithms like structure for motion or visual odometry. Due to its robustness against appearance changes, feature-based visual odometry is widely used. A simplified feature-based relative pose estimation can be constructed in the following. First, extract features in both frames. Second, match the features. Third, use the matched features to do relative pose estimation. A popular way to do relative pose estimation is with the essential matrix, or the fundamental matrix for uncalibrated cameras. However, they often suffer from problems like solution multiplicity and planar degeneracy. To address this, Kneipp et al. introduced the normal epipolar constraint that decouples the rotation estimation from the translation estimation by enforcing the coplanarity of the epipolar plane normal vectors. This leads to an elegant eigenvalue-based optimization for the relative pose. The PNEC extends the normal epipolar constraint by accounting for the error distribution of feature positions. Given multiple feature correspondences, they will not exhibit the same error distributions. For example, an edge-like feature is well localized perpendicular to the edge, but not parallel to it, also known as the aperture problem. The PNEC accounts for the different error distributions by associating an anisotropic covariance matrix to each feature correspondence in the image plane. The covariance matrix in the image plane is then used to derive the variance of each error residual, which is then used to weight the respective feature correspondence in the optimization. Given that the variance of the residual is dependent on the rotation and translation between both images, the rotation optimization cannot be decoupled from the translation for the PNEC. However, we propose an effective two-stage optimization scheme for relative pose estimation with the PNEC. The first stage alternatingly optimizes over the rotation, reusing the eigenvalue-based optimization of the NEC and the translation. The optimization over the translation alone represents an actively studied problem in the form of generalized Rayleigh quotients. The second stage is a joint refinement over the complete pose which makes use of a least squares formulation of the PNEC. An evaluation on synthetically generated experiments shows the benefit of the PNEC with regard to the NEC for different noise levels and different noise distributions for experiments with and without translation. Further experiments are found in the paper and the supplementary material. But the PNEC also shows significant improvement when incorporated into a visual odometry system. We compare the baseline version of MRO that uses the NEC without loop closure or rotation averaging, KLT NEC that replaces the ORP features used by MRO with KLT tracks, and lastly KLT PNEC that also incorporates uncertainty information provided by the KLT tracking. An evaluation on the real-world Kitty dataset shows that the PNEC outperforms the original NEC even when not provided with ground truth covariance matrices, but rather estimated ones provided by KLT tracking. The PNEC improves local frame-to-frame -frame relative pose estimation and removes long-term drift. This can be seen in qualitative trajectories as well as in quantitative metrics. Thank you for your attention. Please visit our project page for the paper with a more detailed explanation and additional experiments.